Mary had a little man, 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 man. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. My fault. The battle lines in the 200-day-old war in Ukraine are being drastically redrawn. Ukrainian forces are in the midst of a massive counteroffensive in the eastern region of Kharkiv that has been successful in taking back large swaths of territory previously under Russian control. And tonight there is a major Russian retaliation. Joining us now from Ukraine to discuss the implications of these major developments is Nick Schifrin from Kharkiv. So, Nick, what are these uh, officials there in Kharkiv telling you? Police and military officials, Jeff, here in Kharkiv, describe a Russian route. And as you just said, Russia tonight has responded in a way that it has not responded yet in this seventh-month war. It has attacked Ukraine's critical infrastructure, the electricity grid. Kharkiv, this city that we're in now, is in total blackout after Russia bombed a power plant nearby, also in blackout, the whole, the whole region of Kharkiv and the Donbass region. That is 250 miles from north to south that has no electricity tonight. But all of that came after Ukraine's dramatic gains that have really eroded Russia's ability to hold this critical eastern part of the country. Today, the military and President Zelensky announced the liberation of more than half a dozen villages, most in a line east and southeast of Kharkiv, as you can see there. That follows the liberation of Kupiansk, a major railway hub that Russia was using for logistics, and Izium, Russia's most important base that was in Kharkiv, although police officials here say there is still some fighting uh, in some of those cities. In total, the military says it's liberated at, at least that huge swath of territory you can see there in blue. Yes. That is as much as a thousand square miles in a matter of days. Oh! Yay! <laughs> Slava Ukraini, everybody. Slava Ukraini. This is uh, the good opening for a Monday. This is a really good story. It looks like um, Ukraine tricked Vlad into believing that they were going to do some sort of an offensive in the south, in the in the Donetsk region down there. And instead, uh, they put it out on the air that they were going to go to the south and blah, blah, blah. And Putin put like 10,000 jailbirds or whoever he's using now. I mean, this is just uh, madness. He's, he's literally had heavy losses of troops. And now they're raiding the jails and uh, telling prisoners, okay, you have a choice. Either you can stay in prison or you can go fight your brothers in Ukraine. And some of them, uh, you know, are going in, into Ukraine. And then uh, they tricked them. And the Ukrainians actually moved to liberate Kharkiv, which is, you know, in the north there. And uh, they were very successful in doing that. They were very successful in tricking. And, and so the uh, Russian soldiers, oh, my God. They literally dropped their rifles and fleed. They, they fled. They fled. Now, why would you drop your wi rifle? I mean, I would trade it for a bicycle or something. You know, like, why would you? Because they're losers. They're prisoners. They don't know any better. And then they went into people's houses and they, they stole or asked them for clothes. Why'd they do that? Because they didn't want to look like Russian soldiers in the drone video. Don't you think if you were a drone operator and you were looking at the drone footage and you saw like, oh, I don't know, hundreds of babushkas, you know, hundreds of grandmas just, you know, fleeing, wouldn't you know that those were the Russians? So I would, I would totally know. But anyway, uh, this, this whole miscalculation uh, of the Russian invasion is now... Uh, making Putin scared for his, uh, you know, his his crown, his head of state, his uh, autocracy, his, uh, you know, leadership role, whatever you want to call it. Because, you know, he, he's been as inept at waging war on a brotherly nation as Donald Trump was in declaring the election was rigged in his own nation. Thank God these two are abject failures. Thank God all they know how to do is lie. They don't know how to, you know, uh, pr you know prevail in their, in their lies. They don't know how. And so the Russian media is literally on the TV and they're arguing. This is state-run Russian television. And they're arguing with each other about what to do about Putin. 
what should Putin do? What should they do about Putin? Uh, should they, you know, start thinking about, uh, you know, a much more aggressive uh, aggression, like um, switch up the weapon systems? Like, should they use, oh, instead of artillery, which has been decimated? And, you know, you know, this is why we're winning uh, in Ukraine. The, the reason why Ukrainians are winning in Ukraine is simple. The, uh, the, the, the civilized world, the democracies of the world, especially the West, okay, the United States of America, sent these uh, weapon systems that are awesome. They're called uh, harm systems. Now, you, you've seen them. You, if I describe them, you'll know exactly which, what, what, you know, which weapon system I'm talking I, I can play you a video and show you what I'm talking about, and I will. But uh, these are these big five-ton trucks, basically, that have on the uh, rear of them, they have mounted uh, like six missiles, and uh, it's programmable, right? So you can face it in any direction you want. You can program coordinates, latitude, longitude, and you can strike with precision about 150 miles away. And this is what the Ukrainians have now, and they've been able to use them to great effect. They've been able to get Putin's artillery uh, and just disable it, just dismantle it, just crush it, just break it, just blow it up, right? And so he's run out of artillery. Now, last week we saw a report. Somebody called and said, you know, why aren't we talking about it? And it's because, to tell you the truth, they've been in a stalemate. Russia and Ukraine have been at stalemate. And the reason why is by design. They've been in a stalemate waiting for uh, all this equipment that they need, the heavy equipment, the military equipment, um, intelligence, which the United States has been happy to supply now that we have some, because we didn't before in the previous administration. And if we did, it was going to the wrong side of this equation, right? So uh, they've been stalemated. Everybody's been sort of in a holding pattern, basically. Well, now Ukraine was ready to make its move. They felt like they had everything they needed. They had the intel they needed. They had the artillery busters they needed. They had the defense they needed. Looks like what happened there uh, in the northern part of Ukraine was those uh, Russian troops, whatever, jailbirds, were left to fend for themselves. In fact, there's radio transmissions. And you know how, uh, you know, Ukrainians love to share the uh, really bad news. They love to share the radio transmissions. Well, there are radio transmissions where the, the, the Russian troops were saying, you know, where's the air support? Because nobody came for them. They were and the radio says to them, the Russian commander says to the Russian troops, you're on your own. And leaves them to die. So half of the troops fled and the other half went into houses and begged for clothes so the drones wouldn't see them, uh, you know, uh, laying down their, their weapons and running away. I, I swear to God, it, it's, it's like, a, it is the war. So now we're at this situation where it's not a stalemate anymore. Ukraine has made its move. And now we have to keep our fingers crossed that they have everything they need to hold what they took back from Russia who stole their land. And if they can hold their territory, if they can hold Kharkiv, if they can hold these towns that they were able to uh, take back after, you know, a month or, or five months of occupation by these, uh, you know, these disgusting, rapey troops of theirs, you know, Putin's troops, uh, I mean, this... They were very, very uh, drunk, and they were very rapey. So now if we could hold, if they can hold their territory and uh, manage to, you know, make Russia, you know, a, a defeated nation in their endeavor. See, because I will tell you, so, so what, what Russia did was they bombed a utility plant so that they would plunge everybody into darkness without electricity, without, and, you know, it's September. It's going to get cold there. They might be in for a very miserable winter. But uh, remember, Russia needs the money to support their war. So it's sort of a double-edged sword. Russia says, uh, you know, if you... Because Europe is talking about capping the price that they will pay Vlad for, uh, you know, uh, uh, natural gas and oil. And Vlad says, if you do that, if you cap the price, I will cut you off completely. I will, I will. And they're saying, but you need the money. You know what I mean? And so there's a stalemate there on the energy front. This is just, but the media, some of them are saying he can't win. Time to get rid of him. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.